What exactly do you see when you see me? Am I automatically a suspect? Am I automatically a threat to you? Do you see me as a friend? Are you kind of scared? My biggest question is what exactly have me and my people done to you to make you feel that you are always in danger whenever you are around us? What is the threat that you see in me that I cannot see in myself? I am one of the easiest people you can talk to. But if you automatically assume that I am this mean person, you'll never know who I truly am. The night we met, literally, I invited her to church the next morning, which was Sunday. All of us have one specific thing that we do. <laughs> yeah. we, we can say in the list, I was the drummer. I'm the dancer. I'm the praise and worship leader. And I was a pastor. Dante Jarrell Taylor was my older brother. He was approached by two officers in a squad car. They asked him a question and, and it scared him. And my brother ended up running. The accusation that my brother had a gun was absolutely false. It was a narrative to paint my brother as somebody that he wasn't. He was shot six times with trash being his burial. He was a mentor to me. I looked up to him and I truly loved him. And I'm sad that he's gone. But Dante was my right hand. He was an outdoor kid, just like I was. Everybody else would like sugarcoat things, but he was just like, look, this is how it is. I thought, that's what I loved about him. He was the life of the party. We would just come in with a, with a dance or a song in the spirit. And then you have to start dancing along with him or acting crazy with him, because that's just who he was. He told me that being an impact in your community is bigger than what society may say it is. Every time I leave my house, I always tell my mom and my dad and my sister, I always tell them I love them just in case. When you watch the news and you see all these cases of young black men and women who are innocent, who get shot and killed by police officers, it makes me scared to leave my house now. Every time he leaves the house, I have to think, is he coming back? Thinking about that walk to the, to the corner store, he didn't make it. It's gonna, it's gonna go on for the rest, for the rest of our lives. It's, it's never gonna ever go away. To America, when they see me, it seems like they see another suspect of a crime that was never committed. Because I know that people would look at me differently. I always have to make sure I'm the person that is nice because I don't want any kind of situation due to the fact that I am black. It's always going to be out of proportion. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's been hard since the tragedy happened four years ago, but at the same time, I know that God is always keeping me and he's watching over me 24 seven. Music is what has helped me express my feelings towards the situation. Toward the ones who killed my brother, I feel anger. And in all honesty, I really hate them for doing it because that was my own flesh and blood that they took from me with no remorse. But at the same time, I also forgive them. Because if I can't forgive them, then I'ma hate them. And that hatred will forever roam in my heart and I'm going to explode on somebody else who didn't deserve it. I decided to start writing poetry and I started making music on behalf of my brother. Um, if it's okay with you guys, I was wondering if I can spit a poem that I wrote in honor of my brother, that's fine. A mystery for history, these things up on our plate. How can we make this country great again when it was never great? Rebellious ways up in the days we were enslaved, that's what fights to do. We had to march from day to day just to get our rights approved and it's sad that this place won't change, no matter how many times that we mention it, it just stays the same. But welcome to America. I still have a life that I have to continue to live. And if I don't forgive them, then I'll never be able to move on and move forward. 
the tragedy itself is what made me realize that I have a gift and a calling to not only spread peace among others, but to spread the love of Jesus Christ and be able to tell people that no matter what situations you go through, you can always achieve and accomplish your goals, even through the tragedies that happen. Great changes are happening, but that's what happens when we in the moment. You know, we've been rioting and, and marching and protesting for, for years, and it always ends up with the same result. Basically, like, it'll go away. So I don't think there's anything that we can say because we've been saying it for a long time. This is the first time that we've seen, you know, whites and uh, Hispanics and, you know, in Australia actually marching and, and, and sounding an alarm. So that's where the change comes from. It's nice to hear that now, you know, the word reform is being uh, used a lot. So definitely with all the stuff going on today, hopefully it affects the future to where when I have a son, he can be able to walk down the street in a black or white neighborhood without getting looked at any differently than his white friends. But being able to play in the street and if a sheriff car who's patrolling the area comes by, he doesn't get scared and run in the house because he doesn't know if his life is in danger or not. That's the life I want to see. Freedom, there is still discrimination in the name.